Good evening and welcome to the awards ceremony for the 2021 Deborah Rogers Foundation Writers Award. I was looking forward to meeting you all in person, but since that can't be the case, welcome. The foundation was set up in memory of the legendary literary agent Deborah Rogers, who died suddenly in 2014. She was my business partner for nearly 30 years. Deborah's particular genius lay in identifying talented young people in the publishing world, and this Writers' Award was created to support unpublished writers throughout the Commonwealth. The winner will receive £10,000 and the two runners-up will receive £1,000 each to help them while they finish their books. I want to thank at this stage the many donors. We exist entirely on voluntary donations and I think what has been achieved, bearing that in mind, is quite extraordinary. I want also to thank all of our judges and uh, the staff of RCW who work tirelessly uh, to keep the foundation running. This year we had a remarkable 983 entries, was a record, from which a long list of 12 was selected and sent to our judges. We have some very exciting news later in the year, um, with new innovations to do with what was the bursary and bringing new young people into publishing and giving them the experience they need to succeed there. But today is all about the Writers Awards. Thank you, Michael. And may I now hand over to Com to Bean, who will introduce the judges, discuss the shortlist and announce the winner. We chose three writers for the shortlist. We chose The Shrills by Yasmin Awad, a wonderful novel about an old girl band and the idea of leaving home, the relationship between friends and family, the relationship between, in, in a way, the tension with home being played out musically. I loved the way that it brought to life 1970s London, the heat wave, Brixton, the way the music scene in London is changing and evolving, all told through the eyes of these three different girls who have formed a band. I loved how it captured the kind of overwhelming excitement, desperation, fear, uh, sense of possibility of adolescence and growing up and finding your place in the world. The other novel, it was Sophie Meadows' novel The Frog, which is set in 16th century in Elizabethan England, a marvellous novel which gives an account of the poet Isabella Whitney and her brother, and the idea of being a reader, a woman reader and a woman writer in these dark years for women, and also of being a homosexual man as her brother. And that is the drama of that book. I'm a big reader of historical fiction, so I was really excited to find such a strong historical entry in The Frog. I am also very fond of novels that bring to life the voices of real women who have been forgotten to history and that is what The Frog does. It is written with a real confidence and smoothness and you're just immediately involved in the world. The Travelling Hand by Mathilinda Nabogodi um, is a non-fiction book and um, it's the subtitle is Reflections of a Black Woman in the Romantic Archive and it's, it's a whole new way of, of entering into the archive, looking at the works of figures like Shelley, but from the perspective of someone who's black, from the perspective of black history, from a whole new way of seeing that poetry and seeing the world around that poetry and seeing that period. The book manages to find a really good balance between academic rigour and research with a really personal and readable approach to the subject. It stood out for me on all my criteria, on its writing quality, on its originality and on the timeliness of its subject. It was a difficult decision because these were three very different books. I think any one of them could have won this prize. What a privilege it's been. We had a long list of incredibly challenging, unique and interesting voices coming through uh, across the board in non-fiction, uh, short stories and the novel. It's just terrible that we have to choose a winner. But in the end, we decided that The Trembling Hand by Mathilinda Nabogodi was the winner. And um, we would like to congratulate her and thank her very much for this book. I am very sure that our winner and the two runners up will go on to have very successful publishing careers. And I think that most of the longest will as well. There was such an array of writing, of styles, of stories. 
when I saw the premise for The Trembling Hand, I was immediately excited and had high hopes. I loved the way that it combined an exploration of the romantic poets, people that we are endlessly fascinated by today, with a really timely and important subject of how race and slavery has impacted the way that we understand our literary history and these people. And it combines the two subjects absolutely brilliantly, weaving together fascinating insights into academic research, into the poets themselves and their lives and their writing, as well as this very modern but also personal for the writer look uh, at how race fits into all of this and how the writer as a black female academic encounters these things in her research. I'm excited to see what all of the long lists, but especially our winner and our runners up, uh, go on to become. And I'm excited to read them as finished books, hopefully, uh, before too long. Congratulations to our winner. Congratulations to our runners up. You're all wonderful writers with great careers ahead of you. Let me now introduce our winner, Matalinda Nabagodi, to make a short speech. Hi, my name is Matalinda Nabagodi, and I submitted a book titled The Trembling Hand, A Black Woman in the Romantic Archive for the 2021 DRF Writers Award. I'm very grateful for all the readers at the Deborah Rogers Foundation and the judges, Colm Tobin, Deepa Anapara, and the James and Ingrid Persaud for selecting my work among so many fantastic submissions. I am an academic and have spent more than a decade researching romanticism. A theme that unites all romantic writing is freedom and human dignity, how to live in the world. Yet what is rarely mentioned is that even at the Romantics were writing poetry about liberty, Thousands of Africans were kidnapped and trafficked across the Atlantic into slavery in the Americas. While none of the figurehead romantics owned slaves themselves, they moved in circles that included slave owners and consumed goods, sometimes made by slaves. The Trembling Hand is about uncovering those links between the poetry of freedom and the practices of slavery in the Romantic period. But it is also a book about things. Poets write, and so when we think about their legacy, we mostly think of books and papers. But in addition to such textual documents, the Romantic Archive also preserves objects that once belonged to the great poets. Wordsworth's teacup, Shelley's baby rattle, Byron's carnival mask. In addition to various rings, shoes, gloves, and also a green coat somewhere in South Africa. What amazes me about these things is that when we touch them, we touch something that was once held or worn by the Romantics. So the trembling hand is my way to establish a physical embodied connection to the legacy of their past in our present. Winning the DRF award is such a wonderful confirmation of the importance of this kind of work, especially at a time when the dark parts of Britain's history are finally coming into scrutiny. The prize money will enable me to visit archives, to engage with romantic objects, and simply carve out time for writing. So once more, I want to thank the judges everyone involved in the selection, as well as those friends, colleagues and family who have supported me along the way. Thank you ever so much. On behalf of the Deborah Rogers Foundation, congratulations to Matilinda Nabogodi. A marvellous day for you, I uh, hope, uh, and certainly is a marvellous day for us. Congratulations too to the runners-up, uh, Sophie Meadows and Yasmin Awad. I hope you can find all of you good uses for your money. But I think actually you'll find that the prize is worth far more than the money you receive in terms, I hope, of uh, representation and a push at the start of your careers. When Deborah Rogers became a literary agent back in 1967, and I joined her, I think about 10 years later, the stage, as it were, for writers was Red, relatively empty. It was tough getting started as a writer, but it's way harder today. There just is so much of everything around, so many diversions, attractions in every form and, and of course in the digital media. This brings me to the heart of really Deborah's mission in life. She was an agent for almost 50 years. Those who knew her always came to love her and they knew that the strengths of her personality, this generosity and warmth, was inseparable from the work she did as an agent. She was absolutely passionate at tracking down 
new good writing and helping them through those difficult early stages of their careers. And that's really the wonderful thing about the Deborah Rogers Foundation. It's kept the spirit of Deborah alive in our hearts and has brought, uh, I think, some sunshine into the lives of uh, younger writers who are at that crucial early stage. I raise my hat to you, chapeau bas, as they say, and good luck in what you do next. Thank you, Ian. It was lovely. Thank you for your support for the Foundation and the Writers Award, which has meant so much to the young writers who have been found through this prize. I wish you all a very good evening. Thank you for tuning in. Let's hope we've witnessed the beginning of some wonderful careers.